This is going to be a quick instructional video on how you create Calgary files. To start with, uh, if you're doing a single file, you start with the YXDB file as I show over here. And then um, I'm going to do a level of aggregation setting here where I'm going to pick a field to represent the day of the data. And then we use the Calgary loader file or Calgary loader tool shown in purple on the right hand side. And there's a configuration for this. So basically what you do is you pick the data fields that you want to include, and I'm going to include all of mine. In this case, uh, the 31st record or 31st field is called the day of date. I'm indexing on that because I want to do rapid data remove recovery using the day. And so um, there's a total of five fields that I'm indexing on, and the those index fields will allow me to rapidly remove or retrieve the data that I'm looking for. So instead of doing that one by one, if you have a collection of files, you, what you would do is create a batch macro to, to drive them. And so in this case, what I've done here is created a little batch macro driver program that's driven by an Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet is column one is uh, a one or zero, whether I'm going to convert the file or not. And this is basically date and time. And so I have the input file names of the WaxDB files, and then I put the Calgary output file names here. And so by methodically just marching one month through the next, um, if the convert is one, then it sends it into the batch macro. The batch macro, this blue dot over here, is pretty straightforward. It's a simple, um, just basically a simple replacement of the file names. And so what it does is once I map the batch macro into using these two control parameters. This is the YXDB input file name, which comes down and replaces the fi input file name here. This uh, does that uh, setting of the day um, that I'm going to use for indexing. And then this is the Calgary output file name. So the configuration of this remains the same for every one of these files. This thing sweeps through uh, the list of, in my case, 29 individual files. What's nice about this is that when you look at the performance, um, in about a 14-hour period, when I ran this, it converted the 29 files, and it was a uh, very linear performance across that time, and it went from 0 uh, gigabytes of Calgary files up to 480 gigabytes. You can see that e these, each one of these dots is a one-month one time period, and we can see the dots are separating, getting larger and larger so that by the time I'm out here in the final month, um, this particular ending file is quite big. So if we look at that, we can see, <coughs> for example, that um, this is the size of the Calgary file created. The final month was almost 44 gigabytes. In the beginning, it was uh, less than 2 gigabytes, very little uh, amount of data in the beginning of the project. So what happens is, um, Overall, there's 628 megabytes per minute is the Calgary file creation speed. If you're do, doing smaller Calgary files, it's about 840 megabytes per minute. If you're doing uh, the larger ones, it's about 600 megabytes per minute. And you notice that um, there's really no performance degradation over the span of about uh, roughly 8 up to 44 so far gigabytes uh, in the Calgary file. It's um, once you have these Calgary files, then we can use them to do the rapid data recovery or retrieval, as I'm going to show later on in this article. So thanks for listening.